transgressions he was crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are healed he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are healed for our transgressions and crushed for our sins the punishment
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's service. It's great to see you all here. It's great to see Ray back. He's out of hospital, along with Brian. He's at home too, but his wing right arm's in a car, so he can't drive. Um, but he wasn't feeling too crash hot, so he wasn't coming today as well. But it's good to see you all. Those who came on the outing yesterday, thank you for coming. It was a great evening and um, meal together, and it was great weather for it. And we had a great time with that too. So if you didn't come, you missed out. It was actually quite a good um, outing to have So for that. But as we come together today to worship and praise God, let's just open in a word of prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for your wonderful grace and mercy. And we just thank you, Lord, that we again have the opportunity to come together, to worship together, to praise together, as we uplift ourselves to you and allow ourselves to be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit through the songs and the message today. So thank you again, Lord. We are ever so grateful in your glorious and wonderful name. Amen. Please stand with me as we sing our first song, The Heart of the Father. when we have the love of the father there's one of the outcomes of that is that we just adore him so our next song is joyful joyful we adore thee Yeah. 
Curse, all this happens because Jesus rocks the world. So this is our kids' song for today. So kids, make sure you get up and follow the actions and dance along to it. may be seated. Come up to uh, our church announcements for the week. Nothing's dramatically changed from there. So we have things like the Young at Heart outing, which is on Friday the 22nd. Um, so that's always about the fourth Friday of the month. So that's the Chill and Chat Cafe. We have our food, community food pantry and community clothes closet. So anyone who's in crisis in our community or who needs a helping hand, we can do that. Um, so if you know anyone, please let us know and so that we can help them. Good Friday. So it's actually not that far away. It's only four Sundays, three from today. <laughs> so there's five Sundays this month. It's the last Sunday of the month. Um, but Good Friday is the 29th of March, and um, so that's Easter weekend. And for those who are at school, this is a long term. It's an 11-week term, so you don't get holidays till like the middle of April. Little Footprints Playgroup, we've got that on hold at the moment. We're just trying to reorganise that and work it out with a few of the things that are happening with um, the contacts we have. We're also trying to meet some new ones to try and um, build that up again. So if you know anyone with children that are under school age, please let us know and give them our information so that we can have a chat with them about what suits them best and how uh, we can do that for them. Crafty Fingers is our craft group that's held on Tuesdays from 9.30 to 11.30 and they have a great time doing all different things from painting to um, pottery to card making to other bits and pieces of macrame and crocheting and knitting and whatever the person that's skilled at um, that uh, is teaching that class for that week, that's what's happening. If you want to know more information, please see Pam. 
or if you can't find Pam, then um, have a talk with um, Desley, Pastor Desley. Wednesday nights is our home group and they have a Bible study going there. It starts at 6.30 p.m. and it's held at um, Jenny's place. And if you want to know more about that, please see Malala. She'll let you know what they're um, studying for this um, section and where they're at. And she's quite, um, they're quite happy to have people come along and join that in. Following our service, we always have morning tea. So please come downstairs and join us for that as we enjoy each other's company and fellowship. It comes to our tithes and offerings. So those who are uh, taking up the offering, if you could come and stand and um, grab the... Um, so Connell and, Connell and whoever your partner is, if you want to come, if you want to come and um, grab the bags... And let's just pray for our offering before it's taken up. Lord, we just thank you and praise you that you um, are ever so generous to us. <coughs> Excuse me. And Lord, as we come today to place our offering in the bags, may they be used, may this money be used in a, in a wise way, not only for helping our church and all the things that go with that, but reaching out into our community to help your kingdom grow. May you go before this money and may um, it just help us to pave the way for people to see your love and grace and mercy. So thank you again for all that is given today. Blessed in your name. Amen. So as that offering is taken up, we're take, uh, going to sing our offering song for this month, which is the good... Oh, no, wrong one. Here I am, Lord. For I, the Lord of sin, is God.
come into the songs that will lead us into pastoral prayer and the message. And as always, this is uh, time to really focus upon um, God and to his leading and opening yourself to the Holy Spirit. So you may stand or you may sit, whichever you are comfortable with, and raise your hands um, if you like as we sing these songs that lead us into pastoral prayer. The goodness of Jesus is our first song. The love of God is the song that see, will le lead us into pastoral prayer. And as we sing this song, may we truly take those words into our heart. The love of God is greater far than tongue.
church and take your seats just before i pray today we have so many people to pray for on our prayer list this week and those that have had ops and all of that kind of thing so bear with me and um as we pray let's lift lift these people to the lord in prayer dear heavenly father we come before you again this morning we're aware of how weak we are and of how much we need you we've sung those beautiful songs today Here I am, Lord. Send me, Lord. And I pray too, as we continue in our week, that you will use us in a mighty way for you. I want to lift Malalia to you this week. And I want to pray for her and just ask a special touch on her life as she ministers to those that she works with. We met some of them yesterday at um, at the little walk and barbecue last night. and, And what a joy it was to see how she is walking alongside those that she works with and father i pray that you'll just bless her as she blesses others and as she ministers to those for those that have been visiting our in our church i see the church in action when our people go and visit those that are unwell that are in hospital and that work alongside them like that thank you father that we have a church that just loves one another and father i just specifically want to lift ray to you this morning we're just so joyous that he is actually here with us today and we thank you for the doctors that have looked after him and that have um, helped to to get him to the health that he is but lord we pray a special touch on his life today would you heal his body father and help him to get back to his normal ways we love him father and we thank you that you too love him and are looking after him we think of glennis and john and both having medical conditions that need prayer And so we continue to trust in you to look after them, to love them and to walk them through this time. May we as a church be an encouragement to them and just remember to pray and and just love them as they walk through these times ahead. We think of Jan P today and Jan B, both of our Jans, Father. We think of Jan P as um, she had some news about her brother's health this week and 
And so, Father, we pray that you'll just be with her as she tries to minister to her family and um, cares for them this week. Be with her um, as she's watching this morning. And, Father, we just ask a special touch on her life as there's many things that she's having to deal with too in health-wise. And we just know that you have her close to your heart. For Jan B also, Lord, we lift her to you. We thank you that we could see her at the luncheon that we had the other week and it was great to see how she's feeling through the days that she's been through and there's there's the struggles that with her health that she has walked through too father touch her body Lord, we think of rob this morning who has not been well this last couple of weeks and with a virus or a cough and a cold and and things that are just drawing his body down we pray that you'll strengthen him today as he heads off to work and just be with him draw close to him and help his health to heal (coughs) we think of Gwen too we always lift her to you that joyous life that um, is now talking with her neighbor in her room and and chatting with her and just having a fun time father I pray that Gwen will make many friends at that nursing home that her sweet spirit will touch the lives of many be with her father Lord, I ask that you be with Chris this morning as he's preaching at another church. We thank you for his um, work in the community and for the way that you use him in a mighty way. We thank you for his family, Father, who are here with us this morning. And Lord, we just ask your blessing upon them as they continue to minister. And we think of those that, um, that are in our district, that are in our leadership. We think of our national superintendent and Lex Akers this morning. Be with him as he ministers to our churches but not only that father his father is unwell and and in palliative care so father we just pray for that family we just pray for all of those that have loved ones in care we think of the nursing homes we think of the hospitals and all of those ones that are needing love and care i pray that you'll surround them with angels that you'll surround them with people that can love them and walk through it be with the doctors as they administer care to those patients give them the wisdom and the knowledge you know how to know how to handle each situation in its own merit heavenly father we thank you that you are our god that we serve you and are in you i pray that you'll just draw close to our church this week we pray for all our folk here for those that can't be with us this morning lord we lift them to you we know at this time it's a time that we are are aging and that our health and our bodies are failing us but father may we rely on you may we turn to you may we feel your strength and your presence ever so close may we continue to walk towards the light have our eyes faced on you in your name amen okay so kids if you are ready can you go with Pastor Desley? She's going to be jumping to Jesus with you downstairs. <coughs> and as they go out, I just want to say, I don't know um, what your prayer lives are like, so this is not part of the sermon, this is something separate. Um, but there are a couple of things that if you're never quite sure what to pray for, then and here are a couple of things you can do. Pray for pastors in the Wesleyan Methodist Church in Pacific, in the places they're at. So like Lismore, Tari, <coughs> Maitland, Liverpool, um, we've got Parramatta and Mount Druitt. Um, so <coughs> they're easy to find. You can just Google them and look them up or go to the Wesleyan Methodist Australia site and it lists them all there. So pray specifically for those pastors and their outreach, but also for us. So... Desi and I have been talking about how do we grow as a church and we're doing all the things we have. We've, you know, we're loving people and you guys are doing the same. You're visiting those and thing. But we know that you guys have been Christians for a long time and a lot of your friends base is all Christian too. So finding new people to share your, the love and grace and mercy of God with is always a bit harder. So Malali is lucky, she's still working and so 
she has this outreach to possibly eight or so people through work and and sh that's what she's trying to do is um, invite those people along to a different events to meet us and to see how we live our lives before God and hopefully inspire them to ask questions or to head in that direction. <coughs> if you uh, lifestyle doesn't allow you to have those new connections, then I would ask that you would pray about new connections. So Pastor Desi and I have been talking about it and we still need another <coughs> young family to come along to have that basis for a children's um, within us. So we have Hannah and Charlotte and, and Jade. Um, Jade's still a little bit small, but we've got those. But if we had another family that came along that had two or three kids in primary school age, then that's actually five kids to start a basis from. And believe it or not, that um, having kids is a great way to reach out in the community because when they're having fun, they invite their friends along and then their parents come to things and, and it becomes this domino effect amongst their friends group. And <coughs> so we could, um, if you could be praying that, you know, we would, doors would open, that we could reach out to other couple of other young families, that would be great because that will help us in reaching out into our community. And we're doing that. We're doing it through Breakfast Club, through um, helping those people in crisis and in community, but to build our body of believers up here and help the kingdom grow, we need to start looking at ways we can reach out to new people that haven't got contacts with other Christians. So <coughs> if you think of something and you know um, um, of a group that we could reach out to, come and chat with us, but please be praying that those opportunities will be happening so that we can help the God's kingdom to grow. Oh, we forgot the scripture reading. I wonder why Monica was sitting there smiling. So Monica, could you please come <laughs> bring your scripture reading this morning before we start our message. thought I got away with it. <laughs> um, the scripture reading for today is Jeremiah 31 verses 1 to 6. I'm going to give you some time to um, find it in your Bibles if you have them. Okay. In that day, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families in the of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. Those who survive the coming destruction will find blessings, even in the barren land, for I will give rest to the people of Israel. Long ago, the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. I will rebuild you, my virgin Israel. You will again be happy and dance merrily with your tambourines. Again, you will plant your vineyards on the mountains of Samaria and eat from your gardens there. The day will come when watchmen will shout from the hill country of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord our God. <coughs> now let's get to the, the message. So we're continuing on looking at the Shema. So last week we looked at the first part, which was the word Shema, which means listen, and that's what this whole um, section of our scripture is about, that the Jewish people use and recite once or twice a day um, to help remind them of who God is and what he is about. <coughs> and... <coughs> We looked at Lord and it was in capital letters and that was to signify that was actually talking about Yahweh, the great I am. 
And so this Shema is a central affirmation of the Jewish faith. And it's based on Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 5, if you can remember those scripture. And this is what it says. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. The Shema is recited at least daily uh, by those who are observant of of the Jewish faith. And it's also given in um, synagogues. Today, we're going to continue on with the next two main parts, and that's love and all your heart. We've had sermons about love and all the different um, things about it. I didn't realise when I did this that this was another word, ahva, in Jewish that means love. And this is <coughs> shows affection uh, for or care for a person. And it can be used, so ava can be used to describe the love between a husband and a wife, which an uh, example in scripture is Genesis 29, 20. It can talk about God's love for his people, which we just uh, um, read in Judah and um, Jeremiah, but it's also in 7, 8 and Chronicles. There's a few examples in there. And this uh, deep abiding friendship, uh, 1 Samuel 18 and 20, that relationship between one person to another um, that aren't husband and wife, so best friends. That, that's a hava, that affection, that care you have um, for others. And so in Deuteronomy 7 and 8, it says, uh, Moses told the Israelites, God showed affection for you. He chose you because of his ahva for you. So when you look at that, God is saying, I'm not loving you uh, because you earned it or because you deserve it, but I'm loving you because I want to. I have this deep care and concern, this deep affection for you. And this um, love comes from God himself. It's part of his character. He loves because he is love. And so in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3, it talks about that affection, that hava. And that's why Jeremiah says it's everlasting because it comes from God himself. So there's no beginning and no end to it. God's love is just is. You just, you can't put it in terms, you can't confine it to anything because it comes from God himself. It's an eternal fact in the world that we live in. It's not done by duty, but it is a genuine feeling and affection that comes from God for us, for the Israelites, for uh, people that have come before us and people who are yet to come after us. But that doesn't mean (coughs) it's um, a feeling we need to have. It's an actual action. Um, It's that doing part of love. And when it comes to God, he, it's something he does. He just loves us. He chooses to do it. And so when the Jewish people read the Shema, it reminds them that they need to respond to God's hava and do hava to God in return. And so... This very essence, this understanding of Hava underpegs or underlines that uh, line, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Because that's what it's talking about. Just as God loves us, we should be loving people the same way. Our love 
should so show itself through the things that we do. So the way you speak, the way you act, <coughs> how your generosity, the aspects of your life, your whole life should show that love. If you have God's love in your life, then that's what you should be giving out. And so when you look at the Shimra and look at this Ahava, it's a command to love God with all of one's being. This means more than just this emotional feeling or a, a verbal saying, I love you, Lord. It means devoting one's whole life to God, to obey his will, to serve his purposes and to worship him alone. When he calls us to love him with all that we have, it means one mind, heart and soul and strength because that encompasses our whole humanness, our whole existence. It means to love God with all our thoughts, our feelings, our desires, our actions. And so that takes us into the next key part of that, um, <coughs> of the Shema. With all your heart. And this comes from the Greek word, which is lev. So when you look at the Israelites and look back when this was written, <coughs> they had no concept of the actual brain itself um, all <coughs> the things that were done were, that talked about the heart because it was in the middle of your chest it sustained life and so they saw that everything sorry took place from there so all your intellectual activity came from your heart that's what their idea was because it was not only the physical generator of life, but it was also the centre for your thoughts, emotions, your choices. And so it puts the heart very firmly in the centre of a person's existence. It's your conscious. It's the status of your deepest feeling. It's the truth of who you are. If you want to know someone, look into their heart. This puts... Um, and so when they looked at this, so in modern translations, when Lev is in there, they look at the concept behind it and, and so if it needs to, they replace heart with mind or conscience. But mostly it's translated as heart because it's the very centre of everything. God, they just knew that it controlled all. That's how they looked at it. And so when we look at God, he looks at us and he knows us inside and out. He knows our hearts. He reads our hearts and fully knows every secret that we think of that remains hidden. But even so, God still wants us to commit our flip, floppy heart that's imperfect to him. So devoting all of our heart to God is what we are called to do. It is at the very centre of our call. He wants us to do that. We are his people. We are called to devote our whole body and mind, our feelings, our desires, our future and our failures. That's what it means to love the Lord, your God, with all of your heart. Every thought, every feeling, every action. The life itself needs to be devoted to God. And so when you're reading these scriptures and you're going into the studies behind it and you're looking at how this fits in to the overall thing, 
it shows that the Israelites, that the only hope for mankind was for the total renewal of the heart. And if you read through the Old Testament and through Psalms and Proverbs and um, some of the other books, it talks about having your heart circumcised. And this is what the Israelites were trying to get across. Our heart needs to be totally renewed from what it's like without God. To be renewed from head to toe. And if you forward that into the New Testament and to now, we don't have to dream about that. They could only dream about that. They could keep doing their sacrifices and keep trying to obey God. But it was something they knew that they couldn't do. They knew something had to change. And for us, that dream became a reality through Jesus because he sent his son to be that perfect sacrifice. And the Shema is a reminder for the Israelites of what they needed to do. But we have Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ministry to see what needs to be done. For God loved us so much that he gave up his son. Jesus became that perfect sacrifice. He was that perfect, unblemished lamb (coughs) of God. Through Jesus, we can renew our hearts. Our hearts can be cleansed. They can be circumcised through the blood of the Lamb. As you read the scripture and you look at those words, love the Lord with all of your heart. What comes to mind? What does the Holy Spirit whisper to you? Has your heart been renewed and cleansed? Has it been circumcised? And do you truly give God your whole body, mind, your feelings, desires, your future and your failures? Or do you only give parts to him? Things that are easy to give up. Because it is really hard to give over the things you don't know about. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. But for some reason as humans, as people, that's one of our biggest worries. You know, we're going to have enough money. You know, will the kids do well? Um, You know, are my parents going to be fine? Am I going to be still healthy when I'm 90? Going to lose my mind? Am I, you know, will I have a place, nursing home place to be able to go to when I get to that stage? But God wants us to give all of that to Him. Allow Him to do what needs to be done, what needs to be put into place the roof over our head, the jobs that we have, the friends that are in our lives, the people he wants us to reach out into. We don't know what's going to happen even in five minutes or even in 30 seconds or one second technically because it's the future. But that's not what we've got to worry about. If we just hand it over to God, give up our whole body, our whole mind, our future, our faith, everything we have to God, what will our lives be like? How focused would you be more on God if that was so? Could you hear him better? The Holy Spirit, feel his tug in your heart and his voice in Will it make it a lot easier to to do that if everything's been given up to him? Do you love the Lord your God with all of your heart? Remember, in this context, heart is all our thoughts, our choices, our feelings. 
and I can tell you it's hard sometimes to stop yourself and to give it to God. When you're getting frustrated and angry or you feel isolated and lonely or you're not sure where to, what tomorrow is going to bring. Because that's where God says, lean into me. Trust me. Love me with all that you are. So in doing that, as God loves us, we love back the same way with everything we have. It's a hard concept for us to have everything. But once you sort of get a hold of that, and there are probably times in your life when you do that, life seems so much easier, so much full with joy, that things seem to go well. And a lot of times we just sort of out of step with that and things go back the way they were, where we still love God, but not everything is placed in his care. So as you go this week, as you live your life out before the people that are around you, can they see God's love in your heart that you are now giving them? That ahava that you receive from God, are you giving it to others? Are you showing that deep concern, that deep affection for others because that's what God's giving you. Are you giving everything you've got? Can you see those opportunities, those doors? Can you see how God wants you to respond to a family situation, to things that are happening with friends or at work or um, you accidentally step into the shopping centre and things are going, a couple are going at it. Are you able to have what is happening in that situation? Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for your love and grace and mercy. We thank you for your hava that deep affection, that deep concern for us. And I pray, Lord, that we do, that we regularly stop and, and look at our lives and think about what we are doing and are we truly giving our all to you, our everything, all of our heart. And if we are doing that, Lord, then... May we just be able to rejoice and reach out and just fill other people's lives with your hava, your love. Help us to see those opportunities, see those doors that you open for us so that we may walk through them and, and help others around us to know of your love and grace and mercy and who Jesus is and what is all about and it's just not a thing on the calendar where in December we celebrate his birth and in March and April we celebrate his death and resurrection and that's it nothing else that there's more to who Jesus is may we give all of our heart our mind our soul our body to you May we share your hava to those around us. And in doing so, may they feel your presence, your love, and come to know you in a personal way and become a part of your family. Thank you for helping us in helping your kingdom grow. Thank you for keeping us focused and on task, on, on track with the life that we are supposed to lead. As I go this week, Lord, may I myself just be reminded to share that hava with those around us. We thank you, Lord, and all that you are, all that you do for us in your glorious and wonderful name. Amen. Our closing song is called Take 
my life and let it be because that's basically what it is we need to give our life over to God and let him have full control to guide us and show us where to go who to reach out to who to prop up who to encourage put an arm around to who to talk with to love unconditionally so please stand with me as we sing take my life and let it be Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee filled with messages from thee take my shall be no longer mine take my heart it is thy own it shall be thy royal throne it shall be thy royal throne take my love my lord i pour at thy feet its treasure store take myself and i will be ever only all for thee ever only all for thee so as you go this week Remember that word, hava, and its meaning of deep affection and care, that type of love, and how can you share that with those around you? If you're online and you're watching this, then we ask that, you know, you need to talk about this. You can contact through Facebook Messenger or in the comments or the uh, phone number, that contact details are there. We're happy to talk with you and to encourage you and to uplift you in what you're doing. But as you go this week, guys, have a great week. And may, without you even thinking, you just share this hava with those around you. We'll see you downstairs for morning tea. How deep the Father's love for